Welcome everyone, the hour being 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. The Tooele City Council and the Redevelopment Agency are meeting in a work meeting being held in the Council Hall Chambers located at 90 North Main Street in Tooele, Utah. This is also being streamed electronically on the Tooele City YouTube channel. We will open with a roll call. Councilwoman Manzion. Present. Councilman McCall. Present. Councilman Hansen. Present. He's joining us by phone. I'm Councilman Brady, I'm also present. And Councilman Graff should be joining us by phone shortly. We will move to item three, which is the mayor's report. Thank you very much, Chairman and Council. I just have a couple of updates for you tonight. Um, I just want to let you know that our library is open again. We're very thrilled to have the library open and have uh, invite people to come back to the library. Um, we also wanted to let you know that right now we are using uh, temporary cameras um, at the library, but we are going to have installed permanent cam uh, cameras on the inside of the building, all the public areas, and then also uh, the cameras will cover all of the grounds of the library. So those are awesome security cameras. We uh, did have um, an invoice or a, a a purchase order come through for those in the amount of $27,497 because that is under the $30,000. We won't bring it to you officially, but I wanted to let you know that we have um, ordered the cameras. They will be here Friday. Uh, the company is already running the wire. They've been there today. Uh, we believe um, by the end of next week, we will have all the cameras up and running there. And just to let you know that we're going to be uh, taking the funding for that out of the uh, 41 fund, the special projects un unallocated funding line. There's about 44,000 left in there. So we're going to take this 27, almost 20, 27, five out and that's how we'll pay for the cameras. So we're just excited to have those done and appreciate Wasatch Electric that they're working so hard to get that done quickly for us. Um, now I want to just let you know a little bit about, um, we're gonna talk about flooding again. We, I, I'm, I'm amazed at the snowfall that we've received. I think all of us um, have been quite shocked. Uh, the, the snow, I did see a flash come across my phone a couple of hours ago that said that the Great Salt Lake has risen three feet since November at its lowest point. So that's before any runoff. So we may get our lake back after this snow starts to melt. But as you can see what's up, uh, the little graph that Paul provides for us, that right now the snow depth is 140 inches. That's a water equivalent of 46.2 inches just so you know, that is a lot of water. Um, in fact, that went up about two, two and a half inches in the last couple of days. It's, it's just amazing. But as you can see, that top green line there, that's 1984. The um, gray line that is just below the green, where our red has now surpassed, is 1983. And uh, the green line on the, the darker green at the bottom is, is like normal, median. So we're, we're way above. Um, the worst thing that can happen is for it to warm up very quickly. And if you've looked at the weather reports for next week. It's warming up very quickly. It's warming <laughs> up very quickly, exactly what we don't want. So what we want to do really, again, is remind our residents that we have the sand at the sandbagging station. The bags are there also. They're in the garbage can that's there. That's where those bags are. We have been contacted by many groups who want to fill sandbags and have already filled sandbags. So if uh, people just want something to do, uh, whenever a teenager says, I'm bored, take <laughs> them over and just fill up sandbags and leave them there, right there at the station. And then when someone else that maybe um, is not able to do it physically, they can, they can just pick up the bags and not have to fill them by themselves. And so reminding them that the sandbags will be there. We've, we've got plenty at this point. And then, um, Holly, will you switch over to the next picture? I guess a resident sent us this picture. And uh, you, if you maybe recognize, you can see 
West Elementary in the background of that top left-hand picture, and that is sandbags and water, looks like a river coming down 400 south, and I guess at the time it was the city that built those little walkways, little bridges, little wooden bridges, certain places in town to get people to and from. I don't know who that person is. I think that I know, but I won't say, just because it might not be, but it really looks like someone I know. Um, a, a wonderful school teacher at, at West Elementary. But um, just so that everyone knows, we have made a lot of improvements in the city since 1983 to mitigate floodwaters. Now the, the river will go down 700 south if that is what happens again. So those people that live on 700 south have experienced it. They will know what that will be. We'll need some sandbags along that route also. But I am just grateful to all of the city staff. There are many departments and many people that are working on this. And, and we are doing what we hope that we um, could get done to prepare, but we don't know. We can't control the weather. But, but we're very, um, we're as prepared as we can be, and we will watch. So watch our website. Um, we'll send out messages through social media, and we're just going to be watching. So thank you again to everybody, and that's my report tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councilman Graff, are you on the phone now? I am. Thank you. All right. So he joined us at 535. Okay, we will move on to item four, which are, is our council member's report. We will start with Councilwoman Manzion. Okay, thank you. Um, I had a couple of things. Um, I've listened to a couple of the league's lunch presentations, I guess, on Zoom last couple of weeks, and there is a really last, not today, but last Wednesday, there was one on the moderate income housing plan. I would suggest everybody listen to the recording. It was um, really interesting and slightly surprising. And there are some things, um, they talked about it a little bit today as well, that they anticipate some changes will have to be made again to that legislation. But for now, I th thought it was very informative and I would suggest listening to it. Um, and then today there was a legislative update and I thought it was interesting that there were 576 bills passed this year and less than 20% of them went through the interim discussion. So that means to me that most of the bills are on the fly <laughs> um, without a lot of discussion in the, in the you know, before the session starts. So I think it's important that we get kind of maybe a little bit more involved in some of the bills that are going through. There were, it started out that there was, in, in the bills that were introduced, there would have been about $198 million worth of unfunded mandates. Because people got involved, that those didn't all pass. And it ended up with about um, $13 million worth, in the aggregate for statewide, not mm -hmm. for Tooele. Um, $13 million worth of unfunded mandates that did pass, but because of the increased transportation um, funding, we should kind of break even or maybe even be a little bit ahead. And that's, I think, because people got involved and spoke up, you know, and I think the league presented that when they send in, when they send notices out asking how it will affect our city, they do present that to the legislature and say, this is how it directly affects our cities. And some of those, they for the first time this year, they did a financial impact for cities, they said. So on a couple of these bills, they went back and said, this is the direct financial impact to our cities in the state. And I think that makes a difference because it paints that picture. So I think it's important, you know, we, we aren't legislators and we don't all have all day to go up there and lobby or to discuss things, but when there are big things that come up, I think it's important that we pay attention and reach out and maybe build some um, relationships with the people who are representing us so that we, when we contact them, they at least know who we are, and I can do a lot better on that, but I thought it was interesting. And then on a happier note, it was awesome to attend um, Twill High School and listen to Governor Cox. I thought that was really fun to be there with the students. And then I took my grandkids to the Downtown Alliance event and we hunted for Peter Rabbit this Saturday. And it was really fun. Although two-year-olds walking for blocks on end is really tiring for the grandma. But it was really fun and we got lots of treats and saw the Easter Bunny and I thought that was a great event and it got a lot of people out to the downtown. So I appreciated that. And then I did receive a couple of patron comments which were mostly about parks. So I sent them on to 
parks director, but I appreciate the comments that when we when I get them. That's my report. Thank you, Councilman McCall. Um, I didn't attend one of the events that I was planning on it, so I, I really don't have anything. All right, thank you. Um, Councilman Hansen. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, I wasn't sure if you had called for me. I'm having a hard time hearing you guys. But uh, just a report on the, the downtown alliance. Had a fine Peter Rabbit thing on last Saturday. We had a couple meetings, and there's several things they're planning for this summer. So just watch out for the events that are happening there. And then uh, we had planning commission meeting in the and some other things, but that, that's all I got to report. Thank you. Councilman Graf? Thank you. I, so I had a chance to attend a police banquet, which was great, and, and get uh, recognized for what they've done. And I uh, attended uh, another city meeting, and that concludes my business. Thank you. I also attended the police banquet. I, that's always one of my favorite banquets to go to. And there's a video they play that I've never realized the amount of things that happen in Tooele. So thank you to the police officers for all that they do. Um, I also was there when the governor came to Tooele High School. Something interesting about that is we were up in the front and then after the governor, he spent probably a half hour to 45 minutes just answering additional questions from students. And we could hear some of the questions and they were really good questions and it kind of gave me a little bit of hope in the, the youth of the county. And then I also toured the park building that is being built up by, or renovated I should say, not built, up by the cemetery and that was pretty amazing. I think it'll be a good um, addition to the community. So that is all I have for my report. We will move on to our discussion items. The first one is a discussion on a a request to renew cell tower lease option at Elton Park. This is presented by Roger Baker, the city attorney. Thank you, Council. Um, I sent to you a brief table outlining the 12 year history of this cell tower site. And I wanted you to have that snapshot in front of you to see where we've come from. So in 2011, the city council approved what was called a lease option. That means they, we gave the company an option to sign a lease with us for one year. And they could renew that option for an additional year and they did so. So now we're in 2013 and the, the lease option did not give them the opportunity to renew for an additional year, but they wanted to. So we brought to the council an amendment to the lease option for one additional year and then came back in 2014 with yet another amendment to that agreement. So we had an agreement, they exercised the option, they renewed the option, and we had two amendments. So already this is a little complicated and we're wondering, is this company serious? That took from 2011 to 2014, 15, and then they went away. And then five years later in 2019, a different company came back with a different agreement for the same site. And by that time, Darwin Cook was here and got actively involved with the company in identifying the best site for us and for the company down to the square foot, down to which branches on which trees needed to be trimmed so we could, have, the tower could go up. That uh, gave them also uh, it, it wasn't a lease option. This was an actual lease, but they had a, under that lease, they had a one year testing period, kind of like a due diligence period to see if they really wanted to do this. And they exercised that and they exercised the renewal 
for a second year on the testing period. And then that, when that was over, the agreement was over, but they still wanted another year option, so they asked the council to amend that one. And now in 2023, they're asking for a second amendment to the lease, uh, to, uh, which basically resurrects the dead lease, because it's gone. <laughs> Um, but it, it's a mechanism that, that works for a contract. And I, I'm i not sure if, if you want to um, give new life to a lease that has expired under its own terms, that has its compensation negotiated years and years and years ago, 12 years ago, but I needed to bring it to you to discuss what you'd like to see happen. I don't see. I don't know that there's a downside. I, um, on the other hand, I don't know that you want to be strung along year after year with no revenue on a site you've committed to for 12 years. So so the discussion. city's received no revenue right like the lease was during the testing period there's no revenue that the city receives correct until something's actually built until something begins to be built and the commencement period which triggers the rent payment mm -hmm. is is carefully defined in the agreement as what it means to commence construction and it's never happened so it's a great place it gives great cell coverage uh, i would think it's a I, I'm sure it is a desirable site. I just wish they would get busy and build a tower if they're going to do it. I mean, I don't see any reason to renew the option for them right now, so I'm not really in support of being drug along and nothing happening, so. That was going to be my question, is the revenue and at what point will we see any? So that answers mine, and I would agree. And I, I, I have to agree. I, I think if they're asking to extend it uh, for another year, that tells me that they're making a profit. And if they're making a profit, they should be sharing it. And if they're not willing to build, then why let them do it again? Tony or Ed, do you have any comments or agreement? Yeah, I, I would think if we want to renew something, they'd have to give us some kind of payment to maintain saving them for them, rather than for nothing. Yeah. Did he say payment? And I, I feel like there's not, I'm, I'm trying to see the benefit of it since nothing's happened. Yeah, I don't know if you could hear Ed. He said, just to sum up what he said, that they should have to have some kind of payment to keep moving forward. So. I think if they want you to commit to them and to this site, that yeah, they ought to offer, give you a reason to do it. Mm -hmm. And to date, they haven't. Yeah. Well, it seems pretty unanimous that we don't see any point of moving forward until something will be built there. Okay, I'll reply back to or the company. Could, or they could pay to reserve the sure, lease. Yeah. yeah. They need to make an offer yeah. that you can yeah. talk about instead of just, hey, can we have year 13. <laughs> so, okay. Well, very good. Thanks for that direction. Thank you. All right. Discussion item B is ordinance 2023-13, an ordinance of Tooele City amending Tooele City Code section 10-3-31 regarding service of notice of parking violations presented by Roger Baker, the city attorney. This is uh, truly boring, hair-splitting legal stuff, but it is important. <laughs> so when we have police officers that are issuing parking tickets for <coughs> snow event parking, um, right now they have, to, they have to be able to deliver the ticket or the person can't be responsible for the ticket. And, and we do have people coming to the appeal, appealing and coming to their hearings saying, we got nothing, we didn't know. Um, 
And the only reason they knew to, to appeal is they got a letter from the finance department that said, you got a ticket. And they said, no, we didn't. And so if you have a foot of snow on a car, it, you can't, it's not practical for the officer to leave it on the car, which is one existing option. And it might be practical to go to the front door of the registered address, but frequently no one's home. And so if we can't serve the ticket with our existing options, we either need to not do tickets or give the officers a way to, to deliver those tickets. And so that's what we've done is to suggest two additional ways of, uh, issue of delivering the ticket. And the third option would be to affix the notice in a conspicuous place at the registered address of the vehicle. And that could be masking tape on the front door, or it could be a door hang, or it could be whatever, they, however they want to, you know, hopefully not nails, but, <laughs> but uh, no, just kidding. Um, so that would, that would work. And then the, if those fail, uh, we see nothing wrong with putting the ticket in the mail and mailing it to them. The state requires vehicle owners to have current registration ad, uh, addresses on file. So it should be a safe address to which to deliver the ticket. And if it's not, it's the vehicle owner's fault for, for not having that up to date. So with these four options, I think it will there will be less frustration and less uh, wasted time and energy for officers to deliver the, the parking tickets. So. I did see some in my neighborhood, there were some residents who received a, a violation and there was a little baggie that they had put the ticket in. So yeah, it didn't seem like the best method to, to <laughs> notify someone. So I'm in support of this. There was also a resident that called Tooele City and Spoke with Shiloh, I tried to reach out to them. I wasn't able to talk with them directly, but they also had a concern about the penalty. It says after 15 calendar, calendar days, the it increases to $100. So I left a message and let the resident know that I would bring that up to the council. We could discuss that as well, if, that's, if we feel like that's a sufficient amount of time for them to pay the, the fine. How many days? 15. It starts out at a $50 fine. After 15 days, it doubles if it hasn't been paid. I don't think 15 is, is enough time. Reason being, um, we have a lot of citizens that are on, um, um, like Social Security, whatever, they only get paid once a month, and they only get paid like the first of the month. So if they get the ticket right after, you know, middle of the month, that 15 days would expire before they could potentially get the money to do it. But if we did it for 30 days to, to, to pay the ticket, I, I don't have a problem with the 100 bucks that, that I know. Okay. I, I think in this particular circumstance, he didn't actually get the ticket, or someone found it, it sounded like, and then let him know, and it was after the 15 days had mm -hmm. gone, so. One of the challenges we had, Councilman McCall, with this whole ordinance, it's in the parking chapter. Mm -hmm. And when, we, when you first enacted this uh, snow event parking violation, we had a different penalty for that one than we did for all other parking violations. And it became very confusing very quickly for people, including our own finance department, that now had to uh, decide well, which letter do I send? And is it a 15-day period or uh, another one? And is it a $50 fine or a $100 fine? So we did um, simplify it in that respect. Um, I'm, I'm not saying we can't do it, but I am wanting to mention some of the complications. Mm -hmm. uh, in Spillman, we use the ticket system that requires them to call in within 15 days. And uh, we can't change that on the Spillman tickets, to my knowledge. So we would have to institute an entirely new ticketing system. Um, don't want to do that. 
If yeah. it's 15 that, days, then it's 15 days. So does the 15 days, because I think the delivery method is probably the real problem, right? It's think. being placed on a car, it blows off, they don't find it. If it's mailed to them, does the 15 days start when they receive the letter or does it start when it was sent? Right. We have the same provision in the um, nuisance abatement chapter where we will presume that a letter that's mailed will get there three days after we mail, we mail it. Okay. So on day three, that's when that 15-day clock will start running. Um, that's, that's how we approach that. That's what my question was, too. And I also wondered, is it always 15 calendar days and not 15 business days? Different, different ordinances in the code do have different appeal deadlines. But this particular one is the only fee that we have an increase in the fee if it doesn't get paid. So this is a unique provision. And we put calendar days in there intentionally so that every day ticks off and they have two weeks to do it. If it's 15 business days, it's three weeks. Um, and if you just put 15 days, then nobody knows what it is. So to keep with, to be consistent with other provisions, we, um, when we passed this several years ago, the council said calendar days. And then okay. this might be a question more for Chief Day, but are the officers trying to knock on the door if it's them, or is it would they automatically just send a ticket by mail? Is there like is there a first we try to contact them Good and question. then we send a, a ticket in the mail, or is everyone going to get it in the mail? I mean, every every case is a little different. Sometimes we get complainants and no one's home. And uh, we can go forward from there, but we always try knocking and get uh, compliance. That's our goal is to get compliance. So if they'll move it, we're not, right. I'd say in general, we're not trying to do a citation unless there's circumstances in the complaint that dictate otherwise. Okay, thank you. I'm good with this. I am too, yeah. I'm okay with the 15 days too, and then we kind of see if if the delivery method was what was causing problems. And so I'm, I'm okay with that. I just wanted to bring that up because a resident had specifically asked about that. Tony, to add any thoughts? I always feel bad when you're on the phone because we don't forget you. <laughs>